Hi friends, and thanks for tuning in. Today I want to show you two different ways you can set the default value of a dropdown in Power Apps. For example, in this Canvas app, when we go to create a new event, I want the event type to default to please select, or holiday, or what have you. Whatever your use case is, you basically want something to be selected here in the dropdown by default. We'll also briefly see how this works in a model-driven app if you're working on those. It's actually pretty easy to do. I'll show you the different options, but let me just spend a minute walking you through the setup that I have here. I've got another tab open here for make.powerapps.com. And my data source is Dataverse, but you could also pull data from SharePoint or Excel or some other source and it should work the same way. But I've created a table here called event. And if we look at the columns there, that dropdown is pulling from this column event type, which is of type choice. And then down here, you'll see that I filled in the different choices of events. Now you'll notice that you can set a default choice here, which I have done to be please select. That's what I want to be on the top of the dropdown and automatically selected. Now you could be forgiven by thinking that this will solve all of your problems and make that work in the Canvas app. But that unfortunately is not true. If you are working in a model driven app though, that's based on this table, I've got one of those open up back here. If you were to go create a new event record, you'll see that the event type does default to please select. So setting that default right back here does work for model driven, but it doesn't work for Canvas. So just a heads up there. Let's go look at how to make this work in the Canvas app. Back here in the designer, I just have a simple screen here, event details screen, and then a form. I've pulled in two different fields. There's one for name, one for event type, and then the save button here will save the record by calling submit form up there on the top. But again, if we run this, you'll see that I don't get that event type a default value like I did automatically if I was using a model driven app. So let's fix that. We're gonna be working with this event type data card here. And if you don't know, a data card is made up of several different controls. You'll see over here on the left that there's this control called star visible. There's an error message, the actual dropdown, which in my case is called data card value three, and then essentially the label for that. So what we want to work with is the dropdown, this data card value three. If this is the first time you've worked with a data card though, select the card over all. And what you'll need to do is over here on the right, come into advanced and you'll need to unlock it. Now I did this previously for this card, but if you haven't done that, you'll have a padlock up here somewhere and you just need to click on that to unlock the card. And that'll just give you access to the individual controls within the card and you can set properties on it. And then you can select the actual drop down here. Okay, I told you there's gonna be two different ways you can set this default. The first option is to come up here and select default selected items. And then over here in the formula bar, we're gonna type in whatever value we want to appear as the default. This is gonna go in curly braces. And just so I can keep things even, I'll do the open and closing curly brace. And then inside of that, you wanna type value and then colon. And then in double quotes, the text that you wanna appear there. So this will be please select. All right, just like that, I'm gonna hit control S to save. And then I'll play up here on the top right, and you'll see that I get a default there now. Excellent. All right, now the second way you can make this work, again, we're gonna be dealing with the data card right here, the dropdown specifically. We're still gonna set default selected items, but rather than just hard coding some text in here, I'll get rid of that. Here we're gonna use a function called choices which will look up from the possible choices in this dropdown and we can match it to our text. Here we go, so choices. And then it's gonna need the column. So the column in my case is called event type and that lives on the events table. So we'll wanna go table.column. In other words, events is the table and you'll see the data type there, table. And then if you hit a dot, that'll bring up the columns within that table. In my case, it's gonna be event type, and I can just use the IntelliSense dropdown here to help me out. And then the second parameter for this choices function, I'll hit the comma to move us along there, 
is going to be the text to search for. So we're saying go out and look at this column called event type and find the text called please select in our case. And then we'll close everything off with a closing parenthesis and we should be good. If I save this, control S and run, you'll see again it's coming up with the default, which is what we want. Now this option, at least to me, seems a little bit better because rather than just hard coding the text, please select, we're saying go match this text to an actual valid option from that column. Now, assuming that you're not using the same table and column and names that I have, just make sure that you're updating this right here to whatever your column is. So if you're using Dataverse, it'll probably be table.column, or if you're using SharePoint or something like that, whatever combination of things will get you to that column. That's what you want to update here. All right, now for this particular example, you probably want to make sure that the user actually changes this value, that we don't have an event type called please select. Now this is a little bit beyond the point of this video, but because you'll probably come across this in the real world, let me just show you a couple ways you could handle this. The first thing you could do is to set the error message. So again, coming back to the card type, there is an error message here that you get built in by default. And you could update the text property of this to say, please select an event type, something like that. Just put it in quotes. And maybe you want this message to display any time the please select is selected. So you could set the visible property on this error message. And I've already filled this out here, but basically we're saying if whatever is selected equals that top option, please select, then we want this error message to be visible. Otherwise, false, we don't want it to be visible. And if you're using a choice or an option set coming from Dataverse, just a heads up that this right here, if you're evaluating the data card dot selected value, that isn't actually text. That's gonna come back as an option set. So I had to wrap this whole thing in text. So this is actually the expression that you want. And that will evaluate to true or false along with that text right there. So that's one way you could do it, is just use that error message and display it or not. Another option you could use is to display the save button or not based on this value up here. So let me just cut this error message formula and we'll use a revised version on the save button. So for save visible, by default it's true, but maybe you wanna hide this button if that event type hasn't been changed. So it's the same check. We're checking to see if that drop down has the please select selected. And if it does, we actually want to flip these. We would want to hide the button. So visible equals false. And as soon as they changed it to something else, then we would make the button visible and they could actually save it. I don't actually love this option because if you have a ton of different fields on the form, it might not be clear why that button's not showing up. You could also write some sort of logic on that button on the on select. So right now I'm just submitting the form when they click that button, but you might want to do some kind of logic or check here to say, does the selected value in the dropdown equal please select? If it does, then don't submit the form, or if it doesn't, then do submit the form, something like that. So a few different ways to handle it, but to recap, the way to get the default value set in the first place was up here with default selected items, and then you can either use choices or just hard code the value. So that's it, I hope it helps. If it does, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button so it can spread to more people, and also think about subscribing for more Power Apps and Dynamics 365 content like this. Thank you so much for watching.